You've probably heard a phantom hitchhiker or vanishing hitchhiker story at some point in your life, but you might have thought it was a fairly recent tale type given that it involves a car. Well, you would be wrong. Hi, I'm Juliet. Welcome back to my channel where we look at myth, religion, legend, folklore and ghost stories. And today we are looking at a classic. The classic version of the Phantom Hitchhiker story is told so often that it actually has an entry in Stith Thompson's Motif Index of Folk Literature. This is an absolutely massive piece of work that details motifs, so uh, little scenes, tropes, not complete tales, that's another index, but scenes and tropes that appear frequently in folklore from all around the world. And the Motif Index of Folk Literature lists under E332.3.3.1, there's a lot of these things, The Vanishing Hitchhiker. Ghost of young woman asks for ride in automobile, disappears from closed car without the driver's knowledge after giving him address to which she wishes to be taken. Driver asks person at address about the rider, finds she has been dead for some time. Brackets, often driver finds that ghost has made similar attempts to return, usually on anniversary of death in automobile accident. Often ghost leaves some items such as a scarf or traveling bag in car. And there are also a whole set of related motifs right next to that one in Thompson's index. So we have E332.2, person meets ghost on road. E332.3, ghost on road asks traveler for ride. 3.1, ghost rides on horseback with rider. 3.2, ghost rides in carriage, disappears suddenly at certain spot. 3.3, ghost asks for ride in automobile. And 3.3.2, deity as ghostly rider. And that one is particularly common in Hawaii. So we can see that there is a basic story type here that we might associate particularly with cars or automobiles. But you can see that right next to this classic version with the car, you've got these versions that involve horseback riding, carriages, or even just meeting the ghost on a road. So if we look back through time, we'll be able to see that what looks like a story that's very specifically tied to cars actually can refer to almost any form of transport or even just walking. The basic story, the essentials of the story, are still there. In his book The Evidence for Phantom Hitchhikers, Michael Goss suggests that folklorists recognise at least four significant variants of the basic motif of the vanishing hitchhiker. The conventional address-giving ghost, a spirit that utters some sort of prophecy, and another standard deceased spirit that borrows an article of clothing to manipulate as proof. So this is things like uh, where the ghost borrows somebody's jacket and then leaves it on their grave or something like that. We only lack, that's uh, we, um, this is primarily kind of North American folklore, the fourth possibility where the hitchhiker is a goddess or tutelary being, and as I say, that one turns up quite often in Hawaii, but not so much elsewhere in the United States. And we get stories of phantom hitchhikers from all over the world, they are not specific to America. There are quite a lot from America because Americans drive so often, and because Americans so often drive long distances on empty roads, uh, where there's no one else around, there's no one else to witness something, and uh, dangerous roads where people die in accidents. So there's a particularly large number of vanishing hitchhiker or phantom hitchhiker stories from the US, but they, they appear from everywhere. They're not a specifically American story. So that gives us a sense of the basic outline of the phantom hitchhiker story. We can have a bit of a closer look at one especially famous example from the UK. This story comes from Bluebell Hill in Kent in England. And I actually first heard it from my mum when we lived in Kent when I was younger. She used to tell us this story when we were driving on this particular road. We never saw the ghost, um, but it certainly made the road quite creepy. And by the way, if you ever wonder where my interest in ghosts come from, think about the number of times on these videos I say things like, I first heard this from my mum. <laughs> it's a family interest. And my two-year-old keeps pointing at random people on the street and saying, look, a ghost. So I think it's getting passed down the generations. Anyway, so this is uh, probably the most famous vanishing hitchhiker story from the UK. Uh, the Bluebell Hill is now the A229 between Maidstone and Chatham in Kent. There were frequent sightings of this ghost in the 1960s and 70s. She hasn't been seen quite so often since 1993, although there were reports emerged again in 2019 after a snowstorm and people thought that they saw a figure in the snowstorm. So basically, the, the core story from Bluebell Hill is a girl is hitchhiking at the foot of the hill near the Lower Bell pub, or in some versions at the top of the hill. 
She gets in the car when the driver picks her up, chats for a while, usually telling the driver she is going to be married the next day or that her friend is going to be married the next day, and then she vanishes. And as time went on, she started to be identified with a real person, a victim of a car accident in this area. Uh, 22-year-old Suzanne Brown was killed along with two friends following a car accident near the bridge, near the road, the day before her wedding in 1965. So this story has become very closely associated with this poor woman who was very tragically really killed the day before her wedding in this area. Bluebell Hill also features several other ghost stories, which is quite interesting. So that's the most famous one, and it is a classic vanishing hitchhiker story with all the tropes that you find most often. And in the US and the UK, the vanishing hitchhiker is quite often a young woman. Hitchhiker doesn't have to be a young woman. You get these stories with both men and women. Although one thing that's interesting is quite often it's the opposite gender to the driver. Um, it's a man hitchhiking with a woman or a woman with a man. Often, not always. The Bluebell Hill also has stories of the different but related phenomenon of a figure running out in front of someone's car, they hit them, but then when they go to check on them or to find the body, um, it's disappeared. Uh, that's another very common roadside ghost story, bit of ghost folklore. It's obviously not quite the same as The Vanishing Hitchhiker, it's a slightly different story type, um, but it also, oddly enough, appears at Bluebell Hill. In, in this case, it's a small child. Uh, who apparently has been reported to run out in front of someone's car but then disappear. Michael Goss has noted there's also a Neolithic monument nearby, so weird stuff has been happening in this area apparently for millennia. Um, but there's not, he, he points out, an unusually large number of road traffic accidents. Obviously there are some, and poor Suzanne Brown was killed in a road traffic accident in the area. Um, but actually, Goss points out there are a couple of other roads um, not too far away that have far higher accident rates. So... It's an area that seems to attract weirdness, um, but not a, an unusual number of road traffic accidents. So the Bluebell Hill story absolutely encapsulates the most common modern version. And it does seem to rely on a car, uh, and it usually involves a young woman. Sometimes, in some versions, the ghost gives a warning or a prophecy, particularly in Hawaii, where it's associated with the goddess Pele. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, there are also variants where it's a nun, and those will quite often uh, give a prophecy as well. So there's quite a few versions where the ghost gives some kind of prophecy before disappearing from the car. But those are probably less common in the US and UK in the 20th and 21st centuries than the, the classic young woman who disappears, or in some cases asks to be dropped off at the cemetery, and then you find the jacket that she borrowed on her grave is another common variant. So there are two main elements to this story as it is often told now. The girl and the stranger getting into a car to join a journey and vanishing. So I'm sure you won't be surprised to hear that stories of young women dying just before marriage are extremely common going right back to the ancient world and right back to the Greek myth of Hades and Persephone where Persephone, the young maiden, is picking flowers in a field and Hades whisks her away and makes her his bride and it's a clear metaphor for the death of a young woman just before marriage, which in the ancient world was a young woman's rite of passage into adulthood, because you would get married pretty young. So Persephone being whisked away to be the wife of the king of the underworld is a metaphor for the, the death of a young woman at that point in life. And there are ghost stories from the ancient world along those lines as well. The story of Macates and Philinion, told by Phlegon of Tralles, for example, where Macates has a love affair with this young woman, Philinion, who turns out to have died some time before. But that's really a whole nother collection of stories. So what I want to focus on right now is the other element and the one that makes this story seem so exclusively modern, which is the car or the vehicle. Basically, as we've already seen from Stith Thompson, the vehicle in this story does not have to be a car. You can get a phantom hitchhiker or vanishing hitchhiker story on pretty much any type of vehicle. So in other more modern examples, um, there's one example where it's a motorbike. Robert Edwards of Twingirl in Gwynedd told author Gwilym Vaughan in 1998 that one Saturday evening, a visitor to an Artog caravan park went by motorbike to nearby Fairbourne Beach. On his way back, the bike seemed to struggle to get up the hill. This is an area of North Wales in Snowdonia National Park where there are, uh, it's mountains, it's literally on mountains. Um, this is uh, near to Cataridris and to Barmouth. 
So, yeah, it's when we say hill, <laughs> it's a steep hill. Anyway, so uh, the driver looked back and saw a very large man sitting on the back seat. The size is interesting because in an ancient context, a large figure is usually a deity or some kind of spirit, uh, although there's no suggestion of that in this case. It's just a big heavy man who's making it hard to get the motorbike up the mountain. So when the visitor arrived back at the caravan park, the man had disappeared and he realised it was a ghost. This is how it's phrased in the Folklore of Wales Ghosts by Delith Badder and Mark Norman, which is the book where I found this story. So that's obviously another modern vehicle, a motorbike, but demonstrates that this vanishing hitchhiker story does not have to be in a car. Interestingly, that one is two men. And when you realise that this story can still take place without a car, you realise that it goes much, much further back than the 20th century, when the automobile version starts to become really popular. That dates back to about the 20s and 30s, when car use started to be more common. But in an 1898 essay on Merian folklore, William Davis tells of a ghost haunting a well called Knidu Well, in between the hamlet of Gnarthwen and the town of Dogetli, which was famous for curing rheumatism, another site which has other mystical activity associated with it, interestingly. According to the Folklore of Wales Ghosts, the poet Rhys Jones's grandfather complained that the ghost would jump on his horse as he was coming home from church and cling to the horse's back until he dismounted a mile or so further on. So that, you can see, very similar to the motorbike story, interestingly without the gender thing as well, um, doesn't even really say what gender the ghost is in that one. Like the motorbike, it's much more personal. When you're riding a horse, you've got a figure leaping on behind you. So there's less interest in this ghost having a chat about their wedding the next day and borrowing your jacket, and a bit more interest in, oh my god, something is behind me, <laughs> holding on to me. And that applies to either a horse or a motorbike. And in fact, according to urban legends The Pocket Essential, this type of story was really quite common in the 19th century. These ghost riders, nothing to do with Nicolas Cage or comic books, but these ghost riders would jump onto people's horses and ride with them for a while. There's a lovely dramatic version told in James Bowker's Goblin Tales of Lancashire, and I found this via Gillian Bennett's book of uh, 100 uh, British Ghost Stories. And uh, Bowker describes how one night in summer, Humphrey Dobson mounted his mare to return home. On the way, they came to a place where the road crossed a stream and this spot was said to be haunted by a woman. We're back on a man riding and a woman ghost who had been murdered there many years before. As soon as the mare set foot upon it, Humphrey heard an unearthly laugh from under the arch and suddenly an ice cold arm came round his waist and he knew that something was riding behind him. The mare flew as she had never flown before, and soon they reached the farmhouse. But his efforts to guide her into the yard were useless, and she sped on past the gate. Humphrey heard another laugh, this time close behind him, and turning for the first time, he saw riding at his back a skull with eyeless sockets and gleaming teeth, and felt the pressure of the arm tighten around him. He put down his hand to loosen it and found it was that of a skeleton. They rode on and on, till at last the mare stumbled and Humphrey was thrown violently off. He was stunned and did not regain consciousness till the sun was high. He struggled home, faint with loss of blood and the pain of his injuries, leading the old mare, who was unhurt. So it's nice to know that the horse wasn't hurt. Uh, that's a really dramatic version of this story. It's obviously much more violent and much more scary than the modern vanishing hitchhiker. The modern vanishing hitchhiker is very sad. It's terribly tragic. It doesn't tend to be frightening other than it's frightening to have a passenger suddenly disappear from your car. But apart from that, the somewhat more frightening version is the story about someone running into the road and running into your car, which is obviously terrifying from the perspective of a, a driver not wanting to hurt somebody. But then, of course, it turns out you haven't hurt anyone because they died years ago. So it's upsetting, but not scary, not violent. This is obviously much, much more violent and, and frightening. So the horse version and the motorbike version can be really quite personal and frightening because of the closeness of the ghost to the person who is riding, driving the vehicle. But there are also, of course, versions in carriages, chariots, and a sleigh. So Michael Goss in The Evidence for Phantom Hitchhikers uh, relates a story that's originally told in On the Signs and Wonders Preceding the Liturgic Broil, which is a fantastic title, by a portent collector, um, now I'm going to pronounce this wrong, uh, called uh, Johan Petri Klint. It's a Swedish name. Um, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it. 
uh, he died in 1608. So this story was written down somewhere between 1602 and 1608, and it would have taken place on a sleigh. Clint doesn't specify that, but it takes place around Candlemas, which is the 2nd of February. So in Sweden, that time of year, you're going to be using a sleigh as your mode of transport. So here's the story. In February 1602, an unnamed vicar and two farmers were travelling back from the Candlemas Fair in Vestergutland. On the road to Vadstena, they were accosted by a nice and lovely female dressed like a serving girl who asked for and was given a ride. At a wayside halting station, they all alighted to get some food. The girl, however, only wanted something to drink. A jug of beer was procured for her. The vicar observed that she did not take it up and found it was filled with malt. A second jug mysteriously changed from beer to acorns, and a third, apparently under the vicar's nose, to blood. At this point, the serving girl pronounced, as if interpreting these omens, there will be good crops this year, there will be enough fruits of the trees, there will also be many wars and plague, with which she vanished. So here we can clearly see the prophecy-giving ghost turning up again, combined with the young woman. But in this case, it's not a young woman who's tragically died just before marriage. It's a young woman who is some kind of spirit giving a prophecy. She also, like the ghosts who ask to be dropped off at the cemetery, is disappearing when they reach their destination, or a destination, a wayside station. So they're still on the journey. They haven't reached their ultimate destination. They have paused, rather than vanishing from the middle of the sleigh. But you can see there that this is clear a classic vanishing hitchhiker story. It may be a sleigh rather than a car, and it may have the prophecy element that's less common these days, but that is, as clear as you like, a vanishing hitchhiker story. And we can go even further back. Acts of the Apostles, this is literally in the Bible. Philip the Evangelist is travelling on the road from Jerusalem to Gaza. An Ethiopian eunuch, who is the chief treasurer of the Queen of Ethiopia, is sitting in his chariot by the side of the road, reading Isaiah. The spirit nudges Philip to go to him, and Philip gets into the chariot and explains scripture and the good news of Jesus Christ while they travel. Then they stop at some water. <laughs> That's what the Acts tells us, presumably a well or possibly a spring. And the Ethiopian is baptised, at which point the spirit takes Philip away and plumps him in Azotus, and the Ethiopian never sees him again. So this is really interesting because, for one thing, it's mostly from the point of view of the ghost. Um, it's Philip the Evangelist who is the vanishing hitchhiker. Um, he hops into this Ethiopian's chariot, rides with him for a while, baptises him, and then vanishes. Stories told from the point of view of the ghost are pretty common in modern fiction ghost stories. There's a very famous film where that's the case. Um, I'll spoil it if I tell you which one it is. Uh, also, many, many short stories, fiction short stories about ghosts. Um, it will turn out that the narrator is the ghost, that they've been killed and not realised it, and what looks like ghosts, oh, there's another film about this, what looks like ghosts living the, in their house, actually they're the ghost haunting someone else's house. It's really common in modern stories, but it's not very common in folklore. It, it's more common in fiction. It's not common in stories that are meant to be historical, that are folklore, that are passed down as true, regardless of truth value or not. So seeing this from the point of view of the, the, the ghost, the vanishing hitchhiker, is really interesting. And Philip, of course, is not dead. Um, he is perfectly alive and well. He's just been transported across space by the, the Spirit, by the Holy Spirit. So it's a really unusual vanishing hitchhiker story, but it is a vanishing hitchhiker story. You can do it in a chariot as well. And do we even need a vehicle at all? So in the ancient world, long journeys tended to be undertaken on foot, even very, very long journeys. Most of the time, most people are travelling on foot, not by any kind of vehicle, not even a horse. The Ethiopian has a chariot because he's extremely rich. He's the chief treasurer of a queen. So he's a very, very rich man, but most people are on foot. And we get stories, of course, about appearances of deities or spirits to people while they are on a journey. So in the very famous story of Philippides, or in some versions Philippides, who runs uh, to Sparta to ask them to come and help fight the Battle of Marathon, and they say no. Um, this is the very famous story that gives us the name of the Marathon race because he runs such a long way in such a quick time. Uh, and in Herodotus's version of that story, he actually has a vision of the god Pan on the way, although Pan doesn't follow with him. Pan more kind of sits and shouts at him. Um, so that's maybe not quite the same story, but it's clearly similar. Goss mentions a Chinese story about a beautiful young woman who walks behind someone for a while and then disappears. So that's much more like a classic vanishing hitchhiker. 
you're on foot, but often a man kind of meets this woman. They start walking almost together, but interestingly with her behind him, and they walk together for a while and then she vanishes. There's a brilliant and unusual version that I just loved, so I'm going to include it, even though it's technically not a ghost story, <laughs> um, recorded by uh, Ji Yun, and I apologise if I'm mispronouncing that, in The Shadow Book in 1789 or shortly after. Uh, he starts writing The Shadow Book in 1789. Uh, it's quite long. Anyway, in this story, a young woman escapes a young man who is stalking her at night by pretending to be the ghost of a hanged woman. So there's no actual ghost in this story. She makes it look like she is a woman who has been hanged and then moves to terrify this man who is stalking her. And then the next day, a neighbor's son is complaining that an evil ghost is following him and he takes to his bed and he never recovers for the rest of his life. Uh, his mental health is completely destroyed by this encounter and he thinks that the ghost is following him, which of course it isn't because there is no ghost. It was a perfectly alive young woman who was just trying to get away from him. Um, but he thinks the ghost is following him, which is very interesting that in his mind, he's being pursued by this ghost, even though she maybe followed him very briefly and then went home. She was literally just trying to get away. I love it. I love that story. It's brilliant. <laughs> um, so it's, it's not technically a ghost story, but it demonstrates that that is indeed a, a, a common enough trope in Chinese folklore that this young man thought that that sort of ghost was following him. And of course, if we go back to the ancient world, one of the stories of the resurrection of Jesus has him meet disciples on the road to Emmaus, walk with them, talk for a while, and then they recognise him at the breaking of bread and he disappears. Now, as a Christian, I hesitate to describe Jesus as a ghost. <laughs> I'm sure in the Chronicles of Narnia, Aslan was very clear that he was not a ghost after he was resurrected. Um, I, I'm not sure that Christian theology would view that as a ghost story. Um, but uh, if you are not a Christian, um, that's pretty clearly the, the same story type. And in fact, it comes full circle because in the late 20th century, we start to get stories about Jesus hitchhiking by the roadside and getting lifts in cars. So Jesus clearly has uh, two millennia of phantom hitchhiking <laughs> under his belt. So this is a really old story. Do you have any local vanishing hitchhiker stories? And what's the oldest one that you know of? Do you know any vanishing hitchhiker stories that don't involve a car? Or have you heard any that might be a bit more unusual that do involve a car? Have you seen a vanishing hitchhiker ghost? I never did see the girl on Bluebell Hill, but maybe I wasn't there at the right time of day. Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and subscribe to my channel for myth, legend, religion, folklore, weird history in general, and of course, ghost stories. And I'll see you next time. Bye.